Hello guys, so this is Dr. Khalid. Um, of course, we are going to be discussing today a little bit of an introduction to health informatics, to biomedical informatics in general, and um, uh, we will try to have many follow-ups about the uh, subject so that it makes things easier and clear for you. Um, so, of course, one central concept in the healthcare setting is data and dealing with data. You will understand that we are going to be collecting and gathering data from different sources and we are going to be able to dispatch that data to different other sources. Also, it's very important to be able to analyze the data and from the analysis of the data, you are going to be able to acquire a certain level of information. From that information and the different pieces of information that we are going to be collecting, in the end we will end up with a higher level of knowledge or knowledge um, as, as per se and we can say that knowledge is going to be very important in helping us improve the way that we are going to be uh, gathering data so we will be able to gather better quality of data and we will have a higher amount of data on the t upon the time so we, we, are, we are generally talking about the data to knowledge um, spectrum or pyramid and this is going to be evolving it's going to be a constantly changing and improving cycle because currently we are having better technologies we are able to collect better quality of data and this is going to be influenced on how we are going to be able to analyze data and have higher quality and better information in general have better knowledge so this is very important you need to be um, understanding clearly the difference between data information and knowledge data is just the raw facts so we are going to be for instance if we take it as an example the blood pressure of a human being we will say that the blood pressure of this patient is going to be 150 out of 90 if you ask anyone with no medical background, they will not be able to understand what does that mean unless they have been exposed to uh, blood pressure problems, uh, either themselves or someone from their family. Um, but generally, if you ask the general population, you are not going to be able to have any uh, reply or any explanation about what does 150 out of 90 mean. Why? Because this is just raw data it's not something it is um, understandable by everyone okay so <clears throat> on the past medical professionals they have taken blood pressure measurements for many um, patients and for people also who are healthy and we understood that 150 out of 90 is going to be considered as a high blood pressure this is information now okay you see we are moving from data to information and if we go a little bit further and now with the current understanding um, on the medical field we can say that the um, 150 uh, out of 90 is a high blood pressure this can be of course um, considered as a case of hypertension so now we know it's knowledge we know that the high blood pressure is going to be um, meaning that the patient has the high blood pressure and of course we know how we are going to be dealing with that we know how to treat high blood pressure if required um, etc if it's not something it is going to be um, it is going to be very brief for a given reason as a side effect of something else etc it needs to be treated and it needs to be addressed so in order to be able to um, use data, analyze data, be able to manage the information throughout this, the life cycle of information and data, we are going to be needing the information technology, of course. And we, when we say information technology solutions, we are going to be talking about both the hardware and the software. So the hardware is going to be things like servers, things like personal computers, things like workstations things like mobile devices, like handheld devices in general, uh, like personal digital assistants, PDAs, etc. So servers are going to be a little bit different because they are going to be bigger, they are going to be having higher capacities, and many users are going to be able to use 
the servers in the same time. Um, whereas if we are talking about a personal computer, this is going to be just one user at one given point of time. So if you are using your laptop to write a letter or to draft a report, etc., no one else can be using your laptop in the same time. Uh, this is why we are talking about a single user for personal computers and many users in the uh, same time for the uh, servers. Servers are going to be used to host data, to host websites. They are going to be there uh, sometimes even as databases that will hold um, a huge amount of data. But uh, generally you are going to be having uh, different types of course of servers. Uh, workstations are going to be quite similar to personal computers in the fact that just one person is going to be able to use uh, the um, workstation but workstations are going to be more expensive, they are going to be having higher um, performances, they are going to be built for a specific task, they are going to be of course uh, able to make a higher level of processing if required, they are going to be for instance having bigger screens, if we are talking about the case of uh, for instance a workstation for radiology. So these are going to be um, designed and built to serve certain purposes and again workstations are going to be used by just one user um, at a time you are not going to be able to uh, use a uh, workstation in the same time as someone else um, it's going to be tricky handheld devices and mobile phones also are going to be very important and currently we used to say we need to be having mobile versions of the software um, and uh, now we are saying that mobile only version of the software is going to be enough so mobile is getting bigger of course and internet on mobile phones and handheld devices is getting bigger uh, by the day uh, we are going to be as i told you also needing some software because without the software software sorry you are not going to be able to interact with the hardware the hardware is just a piece of um, material it's a piece of um, metal or plastic or uh, any other type of material and you cannot interact with this hardware unless you have some sort of interface so this interface is going to be created through the different types of software of course we will always start as um, users for the hardware by relying on software as I told you but the building block generally and simply put uh, for software is going to be the programming languages and of course there are many programming languages out there uh, things like Java, like C, like Perl um, like uh, things that are a little bit more geared towards um, bioinformatics uh, like Perl or like MAMPS um, I don't think that it's still quite popular nowadays MAMPS um, but it's historically it's an important programming language especially in the context of biomedical um, sciences and biomedical uh, informatics. So uh, we are going to be also relying on software for data management, for database management systems. We are going to be also needing the software as an operating system. And you know there are different types of operating systems. Windows, Mac OS, um, Linux. Uh, there are also the mobile uh, operating systems such as uh, Android, such as the iOS, etc. Uh, Windows Mobile, of course. But um, the, the, um, the operating systems are going to be important because they are going to be the interface between the hardware and the other types of software. So if you want to use, um, I don't know, Word or Excel on your laptop, you cannot do that if you don't have an operating system that is uh, installed on your laptop, on your computer, on your desktop. Okay, so you will also need um, software for networking and communication. Generally, this is going to be uh, important to connect to other computers, to other servers, etc. Okay, so another concept that is very important and that is central here is the concept of models. And um, models actually are going to be underlying all the types of clinical activities 
within the healthcare facility, within the hospital, uh, within any sort of healthcare organization, actually. So models are going to be generally considered as the basis of the way we are going to be learning about the real world around us and about the physical world around us and how we are going to be interacting with that real world around us. So they are going to be acting mainly in two ways. Either they are going to be acting as copies, as abstractions of the real world. And here abstraction, we are talking about simplification. So we are going to be simplifying the real world in order to be able to represent it. Okay, so if you take a photograph of a person, the photograph is an abstraction of the person. It's not the real person, but when you see that photograph, you will know that this is my friend, David, or this is my friend Muhammad, or this is my friend uh, Jean. Okay, so it depends. You are going to be understanding, or knowing, or recognizing the person. If you take a photograph of a piece of meat, you will understand that this is a photograph of uh, steak, but it's not real steak. Okay, so the photograph here is going to be an abstraction of the real world. Okay, it's a copy the real world but it's not the real world uh, models can be acting in a second way which is templates and the templates means they are going to be acting as a blueprint for something that we want to uh, create for something that we want to build if you want to build a house you are not going to be buying the building materials and right away go to the land and start building a house at least currently we don't do things like that currently we are going to be um, hiring an architect or an architecture agency and asking them to create a blueprint for the house, create a plan for the house and from there you are going to be able to try and move through um, instantiation from that plan to an actual house. So uh, abstraction generally we are going to be uh, removing data and in the case of instantiation or moving from a template to a real thing, we are going to be adding data. Okay, so this is the main difference. So again, models are going to be mainly used in two ways, as a copies of the real world, and also they are going to be used as templates that will serve as uh, blueprints or plans to construct physical objects or to construct processes, to construct procedures, to create new procedures, etc. Okay, so don't forget models are going to be underlying all the activities uh, within the healthcare facility they are very very important uh, and of course uh, as i told you we move from the real world to a model of the world through abstraction so we are going to be simplifying we are going to be removing details that are not uh, deemed as necessary for that uh, case of abstraction of course and we are going to be representing the real world, the physical world, uh, in a model, or we can be using them, as I told you, um, to be templates of the real world. So we start, we start from an artifact model, uh, then we, through instantiation, we are going to be obtaining a built artifact. Okay, so it's very uh, important, and generally, if we um, we try to give an example of models we can say that models can be sometimes built from symbols so we can talk about symbolic uh, models and those cannot be understood actually unless the symbol language and the possible relationships uh, among the symbols are uh, clear and understood so if I tell you E equals MC square people with no background in physics will not understand that they will not understand this Einstein equation of course but if I tell you that E is energy M is mass and C is uh, celerity or the speed of light square so it's going to be easier to understand so unless you understand the meaning of each symbol you are not going to be able to understand the overall equation or here also the overall model so you need to be understanding the language of the symbolic so that you can be understanding the model itself okay so this is very very uh, important to remember and um, we talked about computers hardware and software and talked about models and 
it's very important to understand that we will rely a lot on computers and models so generally we can say that if a computer is going to be uh, simply or solely used as the repository of data it's going to be acting mainly as a database um, and uh, data in the database are going to be um, organized through a given data model or organized following a data model. Computers also are going to be able to um, generate data views in order to be helping us with the understanding and the interpretation. Um, so however, we are not going to be able so unless we have uh, a model of the users, um, uh, a model of the users needs actually or um, requests of the users and those are going to be helping the computer to understand how it should process the data or the information, how it should think, because you know that computers by themselves, uh, they're not going to be able to think like humans do, uh, obviously, and thankfully, for now at least. Um, so we need to tell the computers how to think, and we are going to be employing models to do so so this is going to be also something that you need to understand um, from there we can i think we are ready to move on to the concept of a system and a system is going to be consisting of a collection of components um, of concepts of processes etc and the system can be one of three things it can be a model that is acting uh, as an abstracted description of a set of objects uh, also, it can be a model consisting of several interlinked components or interlinked um, elements that are acting as a template to action and they can be also considered as an artifact constructed by the process of instantiation um, as I told you, so it's an instantiation of the template into the uh, real world. Um, so the systems are going to be, of course, having inputs. You will have inputs that go through the system, and then you are going to be having outputs. Uh, also, the systems are going to be behaviors. So if I give an example of the systems, um, if we say that a tree is a system, so you are going to be having a tree in your garden, and the tree is going to be taking water from the soil, it's going to be taking minerals from the soil, and it's going to be taking sunlight, okay? I'm simplifying, of course. And it's going to be giving you fruits. So the inputs here are going to be the water, the minerals, and the sunlight. The outputs are going to be fruits, and the system is the tree. So you see that you are not going to be given the tree water, uh, minerals and sunlight and receiving water, minerals and sunlight, so the outputs are different from the inputs. So this is why we say that the systems are going to be having uh, internal behaviors, uh, intrinsic behaviors that are um, important. Also we can say that the physical systems are going to be embedded in an environment, they are not going to be standalone generally. Uh, we, it's very, very rare to find a completely isolated system. And systems, they are going to be having um, an internal structure or architecture. The systems also can regulate uh, their outputs by uh, actually using feedback as an input. So you are going to be having a feedback and that feedback is going to be improving the input so that we are going to be having uh, an improved or better output. Uh, systems are going to be also considered as purposive so they have a goal they are built or they are designed or they are created uh, to serve a given goal or a given um, um, purpose in general and uh, they are going to be also considered as being arbitrary okay so this is this is it for this introduction for this quick introduction for concepts if you have any questions about uh, what I have just explained or if you want me to go into details about one of uh, those um, subjects or those points into more uh, details and explain a little bit more things for you don't dare to comment uh, below or to contact me and I will be very very glad to come up with um, other videos to